Hey, I bet you're so used to a smartphone in your hand that you've never even asked yourself a question. Why in the world is it rectangular? Why not square or round, for example? Or why, for that matter, you can't use it when in gloves? Yeah, that bugs me. Well, let's find out, shall we? Ever tried using your phone on a sunny day? Yeah, even turning the screen brightness up to the max isn't gonna work. Why can't they do something about it? LCD screens, in fact, sacrifice visibility for better color reproduction. There are screens that show a clear picture even in direct sunlight, but the color quality in those is much worse. They are mostly used in GPS navigators and watches because you need to see the objects on them, while phone manufacturers keep in mind that you could watch movies and play games on their products. Try doing that under a glaring sun, though. It's not recommended to use your smartphone while it's charging, but for some reason it's the opposite for laptops. That reason is heat generation. Smartphones are small, so all the heat they accumulate goes to the battery, damaging it over time. While charging, your phone heats up, so using it might shorten its life. In laptops, the battery is well isolated from the rest of the parts, and the heat goes around it. And keeping the charge of the battery up prolongs its service time. So feel free to plug it in and work all you like. Isn't it a bit unfair that electric cars can be fully charged within an hour, but a much smaller smartphone battery needs at least the same time or even more? Electric cars have large batteries with separate cooling systems that don't allow them to overheat while charging. Smartphones will need equally good cooling not to melt down if charged too fast, and that adds a lot of extra weight. And on the topic of charging, if you charge your smartphone in the cold, you may notice it goes up slower than usual. This happens because charging involves chemical reactions. They need a certain range of temperatures for optimal work. So if it's too cold or too hot, your phone will charge more slowly. Its overall performance will be reduced too. So better keep it in neutral conditions. You probably know that blue light from screens of smartphones and computers can mess with your sleep. In modern gadgets, though, there's an option called Eye Saver Mode or Eye Comfort. It cuts off part of the blue light, making the screen yellowish, but letting your eyes and brain rest. It's especially useful if you work with documents, since you don't need a full color palette. It's best to turn it off only to watch videos or play games to enjoy the juicy picture and keep it turned on the rest of the time. The expression, orange is the new black, or pink, or yellow, or whatever, suits smartphones and other gadgets like nothing else. Even when there are color options, black is almost always one of them. The reason boils down to black being a universal color that fits any surroundings. You might sit in an orange tone room, dressed in green and blue, but your black smartphone or black TV will still look okay. Same goes for white and gray. All these three colors go well with any other. Now, look at an average smartphone and an equally average tablet PC. Go ahead, I'll wait. Done? Okay. The latter has a bigger size and better computing power, but it's still cheaper than the smartphone we have here. That's because the phone has a radio chip and the tablet does not. Radio chip is probably the most complex part of a smartphone. It has to be able to work with dozens of different frequencies across the globe and have a huge range for you to easily talk to anyone in the world. Tablets, on the other hand, don't need a radio chip. They have a Wi-Fi one that works with just two standard global frequency ranges and covers a few hundred feet, hence the difference in cost. In winter, it's annoying that you have to take off your gloves first and only then answer if someone's calling you. Or you can use your nose instead. The screen reacts to conductive materials, and only if they're a little squishy. They can activate several sensors at once this way. Gloves don't conduct electricity, so you either need to use your bare fingers or buy yourself a pair of gloves with special fingertips. They're tipped with some rubber and conductive powder to imitate fingers. When something's wrong with your device and you contact tech support, the first thing they'd ask is, um, did you try turning it off and back on? Seems weird, but it actually works. Whatever process is running on your gadget, it leaves a trace even when you close it. The more processes you run and then close, the more such traces are left in the memory of your device. And at some point, it might stop working properly. Rebooting your device helps clear all the unneeded residue and optimize its work. Better yet, reboot once a week to avoid this trouble altogether.
Now, take a good look at your smartphone. It might never have occurred to you, but its rectangle shape is no accident. And it's actually what you want it to be. Rectangle is the most convenient shape for a screen. It has an orientation, so you can flip your phone all you want and it will adapt. Imagine that, say, a round-shaped display. You'd have to always turn it in your hands until the top is where it belongs. Next, it fits into your pocket nice and cozy. The pocket is deeper than it is wide, so a phone longer than it is broad will sit there perfectly. A square or circular phone will be more of an inconvenience. Then again, a rectangle is much easier to handle. It fits in your palm, and it feels better than a circle or a square. And finally, we're used to having rectangular things all around us. Pictures, sheets of paper, books, photographs. Having round-shaped screens would have just been… weird. (laughs) Still, they have been attempts to create circular and square smartphones, but as you can guess, they didn't get on. Ever try taking a photo of that striking moon on your smartphone? If you have, you know what a disappointment is. Yes, that little blurry whitish spot is the same beautiful celestial body you see in the night sky. Your smartphone camera is just not light-sensitive enough to capture it in all its full glory. Manufacturers trade extra high quality of photographs for easiness of use, given that the average smartphone user doesn't even need professional pictures. So, if you want a breathtaking shot of the starry skies, better get yourself a DSLR camera with a special lens. Most smartphones now have both rear and front-facing cameras, but they differ in picture quality a lot. This is because a higher quality camera requires more space inside the phone, and manufacturers choose to install a smaller and cheaper camera in the front of their devices to save that space. Instead, they up the performance of the smartphone itself which is a good trade-off, if you ask me. After all, the front camera is mostly used for selfies, and it's not like you're going to print them on a poster. When you turn your phone or computer off and then on again, the booting process can seem awfully slow. Why can't it just start up immediately, right? Well, when you switch off your device, it dumps everything from its short-term memory. Think of it as hitting your gadget hard on the head. It forgets everything you did with it and has to remember it again upon boot up. So, it takes time for the device to wake up and start functioning at its normal speed. Many modern smartphones have had their headphone jacks removed. There are two reasons for this. First, without a 3.5mm jack at the top or bottom of the phone, you can make the device itself much thinner, because now it's by far the thickest part of any phone. And second, Water resistance is trending today, and a headphone jack is a gaping hole in the body of a smartphone. Naturally, water can get in there easily, so getting rid of the jack allows for making the phone waterproof. Taking photos in the dark with a flash, you must have noticed your smartphone flashes several times before making the actual shot. Remember those horrid red eyes in old photographs made on film or digital cameras? That happened exactly because the camera flashed only once. In the dark, the pupils of your eyes become larger, trying to catch more light to see better. And when they reflect the camera's flash, the red eye effect appears. With smartphones, the first short flash makes the pupils contract from the bright light, and only then the device takes a shot. And you don't resemble a horror movie creature anymore. At least your eyes don't. Hey, I'm kidding! Hey, you know what? If you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right, and remember, stay on the bright side of life.